Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, May 30th, Memorial Day. Around 1 p.m. Mountain Time 2022, the models are in. But first, take a look at the snowfall in Montana over the last 48 hours. Hours of powers. The big story more than six. Thousand flights canceled so far over Memorial Day weekend. Keep calm. It's boom time. I hope you're not flying out there. Advisories issued as game changer storm set to bring snow back to the Utah mountains. And it did. In buckets, over 24 inches in some areas. We'll get to those models. Sunday storm sees large hail as well. Strong winds and rain. Take a look at this. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. A severe storm rumbled through parts of Kilo Land early Sunday morning. Waking people with... Well, big hail, holy macaroni. That's about a three, four incher. And that certainly would cause some damage if it hit you on the head. Now, you're not imagining it. It's been windier than usual in Colorado. And anyone that lives here knows it's been windy. And that's a big problem. It's causing issues with increased fire danger, agriculture and tourism, especially here at the sand dunes in the San Luis Valley. Some of the highest winds ever recorded and sustained. Now, severe thunderstorms in the Northern Plains on Memorial Day. Numerous severe thunderstorms are forecast across parts of the northern plains and upper Mississippi Valley with more scattered and isolated storms southward into the central plains. We saw some storms picking up in Nebraska, and we'll get to those models in just a moment. Large to giant hail, especially a threat. 60 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts and tornadoes are probable, including the possibility for a couple long track tornadoes. Flash flooding is possible in the eastern northern plains as well. So heads up, here's the Severe weather threat currently, that's up in Wyoming, and that's uh, in, in Nebraska, and that's going to move up here to South Dakota over Monday and Tuesday, into Tuesday, and then up into Canada there. So heads up if you're in those regions for large hail, put your helmet on. And also, with these storms, there's going to be some snow, some more snow, heavy snow. It looks like 16 to 24 inches possible in parts of Wyoming, and so at least a foot of snow in the... Uh, northern Rockies here of Colorado. So let's take a look at that snowfall totals as of this morning. And you can see here 24 inches in Idaho. Holy macaroni. And six inches in the surrounding region near Salt Lake. And as we saw here, 18 to 24 inches in southern Montana, as well as 18 inches in Wyoming as of this morning. And then this is going to pile on top of that. So that's going to bring lots more snow to Wyoming and Utah as well as Colorado. Good news. We need the snow. Ho, ho. Shut up, Al. Now, the first name hurricane in the Pacific hurricane season, Agatha, is has made landfall. Wind speeds up to 110 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds. Pressure at 964 millibars in the last update here. And it may cause extreme dangerous coastal flooding from storm surge accompanied by large and destructive waves and is expected near and to the east where Agatha makes landfall. This is going to move across Mexico and may re-enter re the bay here and reform as a hurricane on the uh, Atlantic side. Imagine that. And then it would hit the Yucatan Peninsula here. But these areas are going to be under a watch in a day or so. Currently, there's life-threatening hurricane force winds. They're expected in portions of the hurricane warning area of Oaxaca this afternoon and continuing through this evening. Tropical storm conditions have already begun along the coast of Oaxaca and will spread eastward within the warning area through tonight. So heavy rains associated with Agatha will continue over portions of southern Mexico through Tuesday, which will pose a threat of life-threatening flash flooding and mudslides, which I'm sure we'll be reporting on shortly. So if you know anyone in those regions... Well, I hope they're doing well. Here's the Arctic ice extent. It is almost approaching record levels. The highest level in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years now. Highest Arctic ice, ice extent for May 22nd in a decade. An area looking about the same 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Highest in 10 years as well as Arctic ice area. So those are the facts coming from the ice. And here are the facts coming from the sunspot numbers. And they're showing that cycle 25 is pretty much mimicking 24 here with an early peak. So we're keeping a close eye on that for you. Interesting record spike in the Greenland uh, surface mass budget uh, right there. Boom. And that is from May 29th, yesterday. It looks like six gigatons of ice were built. And this is right before the melt season begins. The melt season begins in... Uh, say, first, second week of June. 
June 10th, and we've and it's cold up there. But that's not going to be reported anywhere in the media soon. Now we move over to Iceland that's been rumbling, and you can see the seismic tremor for the whole country. Activity at the Vatna Yokel here where Bartabunga is, activity to the north. Uh, another volcano there escaping me. A, a boomer up here in the Turinus Fracture Zone and the Reykjanes Peninsula continues to rumble, albeit quiet in the last 10 hours. But that area near the Reykjanes Volcano is the focus of the ne next eruption. Speaking of eruptions, let's talk about Bezimiani Volcano exploding to 50,000 feet, subplanian. And as of yesterday, there were still remnant volcanic ash clouds to 45,000 feet. We do have uh, some footage of the eruption. That's a solid VEI 3 or 4 eruption. And we will leave you links to all of this below if you want to go check it out yourself. Now, here is the Besamiani stats. Come over here to the eruptive history, and you can see that VEI-3 is basically how this volcano blows regularly. 2010, 2009, and 8, 2007, and 6, 2005, VEI-2, 2004, VEI-3. Now, you have to go way back in antiquity to have a bigger blast. 4 and 5 here. 1955, VEI-5. And then 950 VEI-4, 700 VEI-4. <clears throat> this could be a VEI-4, very likely, or VEI-3, at the minimum. Spectacular eruption. A lot of material in that eruption going up into the stratosphere as Besamiani is another threat to the year without a summer. Now, what's not a bummer is tonight. Go out after sunset if you're in North America. A brand new meteor shower could dazzle the night sky. And this is the breakup of SW3, which is a comet with a hard-to-pronounce name. Oh, I thought it was in here. Okay, I can't find it. There it is. Schwa it's the Schwassmann Walkman, 73P Schwassmann Walkman broke up. And here you can see the images of that comet breaking up. This is an infrared image from NASA Spitzer Space Telescope that shows the broken comet, SP or 73P Schwassmann Walkman. And you can see all those little pieces there. Now, the contention is that it when it broke up, it pushed some material forward, and that will cause the tau the Tau Hercules, which will be a potential meteor storm of 1,000 meteors per hour emanating from this region just to the left of Ursa Major. So go out tonight, find the Big Dipper, follow the Dipper handle, and just to the left and a little lower will be the apparent point where the meteors will emerge. And this is called the Radiant. And there you can see Hercules. So absolutely fantastic opportunity tonight. I hope you all go out and look up. And that is a boom. One other thing before we go, please check out the Ian Plimmer uh, presentation that we just put up before YouTube removes it. It is a refreshing one and a half hours. It's an expose of everything going on. If you And it's a, a wonderful video to send to people that maybe you want to open their eyes to what's really going on. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people that share this video, the heroes. We love you. And that's a boom. Be safe. And have a wonderful Memorial Day. Remembering those that sacrificed their life so we could have YouTube.